Advanced Algebra through Data Exploration Mastery Quiz Number 1. Today we are going to look at identifying the sequence as either arithmetic or geometric and then we're going to find the tenth term in the sequence. First of all remember arithmetic means we are adding. We could be adding a positive or a negative number. Geometric means we are multiplying. And don't forget, we could be multiplying by a whole number or we could be multiplying by a decimal or a fraction. So don't forget that. All right. First of all, if you cannot identify, hopefully you can look at the sequence and go, okay, I know what it is. I'm either adding this or I'm multiplying by this. But if you cannot identify what you are doing, then you need to go ahead and use the calculator and go backwards. For example, we have 54, 45, 36, 27. Most of you probably could see that and go, okay, I know what to do. I know what the sequence is. But if you don't, this is what you can try. Take your calculator. Take the second number. All right, so let's say um, I think it's geometric, okay? So I'm going to go, all right, I'm going to take the second term, 45, and I'm going to divide it because I'm going to go backwards. Going backwards of multiplication is division. And I'm going to divide it by the 54. And I get 0.833 repeating. Okay, well, that doesn't look so good, but we're going to check one more thing. Take the third number in the sequence, which is 36, and divide it by the second number in the sequence, which is 45. They do not match. They do not match. So I was wrong. It is not geometric. It's a, it must be arithmetic. Okay, well, if, again, if you can't identify what it is, go backwards. So the opposite of adding is subtracting. So take the second one, the second number, 45, and subtract the first number, negative 9. Okay, so the difference must be negative 9. Let's check one more. Let's see, take the 36, which is the third number, minus the 45, which is the second number. Hey, they match. So the difference is negative 9. So that means this is going down 9, down 9, down 9, and so on. So we have decided, or we have figured out, that it is arithmetic. Now, we just need to figure out what is the tenth term in the sequence. So let's use the calculator trick that I showed you. So remember, we start with 54, enter. Then we're adding a negative 9. You could also put minus 9 there. That would also work. Okay, so here's the second number in the sequence. Here's the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. The tenth number in the sequence is negative 27. So u sub 10 is negative 27, the tenth number in the sequence. All right, looking at the second one, again, I need to decide. Okay, well, I'm seeing decimals in there, and it doesn't look very consistent. So I'm going to go, I'm going to guess geometric right off the bat here instead of arithmetic. So again, I have no idea what that's being multiplied by if it is geometric. So we need to check it. Take the second number in the sequence. So take the 13.5. And going backwards, we're going to divide by the first term, 1 and a half. OK, well, that sounds reasonable. All right, so now I'm going to check again. I'm going to take the third number in the sequence, so 20.25. And I'm going to divide by the second number in the sequence, which is 13.5. Hey, super, they match. One and a half, one and a half. So it is geometric. So that means I am multiplying by one and a half, or 1.5, and so on. OK? So now I need to figure out what is the tenth number in the sequence. So again, use your calculator. You might want to clear the screen. Start with 9, enter. Geometric is multiplying, so times 1.5. There's the second number. It matches. Okay, here's the third number. 
It matches. Here's the fourth number. It matches. Okay, and we got to go to 10. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, we're just going to round this. We're going to say 345.99. 345.99. Is the tenth term in the sequence? Okay, round it two decimal places is just fine. So, this one again was geometric because we multiplied. Up here was arithmetic because we added. Okay, next, suppose $12,000 is deposited into an account that earns 6.2% annually and the bank compounds it monthly, okay, 12,000, 6.2% annually compounds it monthly. Okay, forgot the H in there. Each month after that, $50 is deposited into the account. No money is being taken out. Write a recursive routine that provides the monthly balance. All right, recursive routine. So remember, that starts U sub N equals U sub N minus 1. Now, the bank is going to pay you 6.2% annually compounded monthly. Now remember, when we're dealing with percents and we're, the bank is adding money in. We have to put a parenthesis because it's going to be times, and you always need to follow with a one. Now, since the money is paying you, it's not taking the money out. It's paying you. You put a plus. Now, don't forget, change your percent to a decimal. 6.2 out of 100 is 0 0.062. So 0 0.062. But now monthly, divide by 12 because you're breaking it into months. So you have to divide that, per, that decimal by 12. Close it. Now the other information is you are going to deposit $50 into an account. Well, deposit is putting more money in. Okay, You're not withdrawing the money. You're putting the money in. So add 50. That is your recursive routine that provides the monthly balances. Now, find the balance after seven months. So again, this is where the calculator comes in. So let's clear this. So you've got $12,000. That's your initial amount. Enter. Times, parentheses, one plus 0 0.062 divided by 12. Close it. Again, 12 because it's 12 months in a year. If it was daily, we'd put 365 there. All right, we are going to deposit $50, so plus $50. If we were going to withdraw $50, then we would say minus 50, but we're depositing $50. All right, so this is one month. After one month, that's how much money you have. And the problem says how much money, what's your balance after seven months? So that's one month, two months, three months, four months, five months, six months, seven months, $12,796.26. All right? So $12,796.26. Don't forget to round it, 26 cents. That's how much money you have after seven months. Okay, find the balance after one year. Well, remember, there's 12 months in a year. We already went up to seven months, so we can, we can just keep counting. So seven months, eight months, nine months, 10, 11 12. 12 months is a year, so $13,382. And round it appropriately, 86 cents. There you have it. You have your balance after one year. So 
Advanced Algebra Through Data Exploration Mastery Quiz Number One Review.